is I want to show you guys a video. This video is super, 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 super prevalent to what we discuss here on this chat. You know that I have a freaking problem. One of the biggest problems in that game that I have had for freaking since the game came out, since before the game came out, was the character select screen. BB Tag character selection screen is the worst character selection screen to ever grace fighting games, period. This video is talking about how underrated and how little most fighting game creators right now, or developers, are caring about the character selection screen. There's other, there's some developers that are caring a lot about it, but there's some characters that give, don't give two rats asses, don't don't give two shits about the character selection screen. This video basically or dissects the beauty of character selection screens and why they're so important to a fighting game, because they are. This is Stumblebee. Stumblebee is a, a YouTuber that has been coming up, and I've actually heard of this guy because he makes great videos, video uh, like um, like retrospectives of specific topics, like guest characters, like uh, a study on MVCI. A lot of people have watched his MVCI video. These are basically videos that he talks about that are that don't really get explored too much. So this is definitely one of them that I want to watch with you guys and tell you why I care so much about the character selection screen about games that I love, which includes BB Tag. So without further ado, we're going to be watching. I'm going to be pausing through it, providing commentary and providing, you know, as much of my opinion as possible. So without further ado, let's get into this video about the underrated art of character selection screens or select screens. Here we go. Oh, hello there. I don't think character select screens get enough credit. Ever since the first Here one in go. a fighting game in 1985's Galactic Warriors, they've been a critical part. Let's take a look at this, man. About every single one. But I don't see a lot of videos or a lot of discussion about what makes fighting game character select screens good and what makes them bad. And I think that's because on Maslow's hierarchy of fighting game needs, character select screens fall in the middle between something like uh, block buttons and uh, bad anime arena fighters. Once people finally- Anime arena fighter character select screens are, becomes just about can as be pretty freaking atrocious. As the combos they practice. But fighting game developers put a lot- Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I want you all to just, just, just hear that again. Just say that one more time. Selecting them becomes just about as ingrained into muscle memory as the combos they practice. The picking of characters becomes ingrained into your brain as much as the combos you practice with those characters. That is facts. Facts. I still remember the placement of Jury in Super Street Fighter 4. I still remember the placements of Bison in Ultra Street Fighter 4. I still remember exactly where Spencer, Sentinel, and Nova are in UMVC3. I know exactly where they are. And it is such an important thing that not a lot of people realize about character selection screens. So just want to let you guys know about that. But fighting game developers put a lot of thought and effort into making these things. And they make a lot Man, of really the Skullgirls character the selection process. screen is so freaking so sick. I wanted to dig a little Uni's pretty and sweet out as well. What makes a fighting game character select screen so sick. great and not so great? Now, do I expect experienced fighting game developers to watch this video and be like, this guy knows what he's doing, I'm gonna copy on him? No. Did I want an excuse to talk about character select screens for the better part of 15 minutes? You bet your The first thing that jumps oh, out to he me did that. about I'm like, what happened? What happened to the sound? How a game presents its roster. The vast majority of fighting games opt to do something that looks like this. Every character can be seen in a small portrait, and when they're highlighted by a cursor, the more detailed Damn, version WWE of that portrait character goes up selection on whatever side that you are in control of. And that's Damn. fine, that's perfectly usable, but for most first-time players, 
Character select is where they're introduced Damn, to the dude. entire cast for Forgot the first about time. These. So give me something to go on when I'm trying to figure out who I want to play. Whether it be their fighting style, like in Virtual Fighter, or a little glimpse into their personality, like in Injustice 2. Injustice 2 character selection is pretty sweet. if I had my sweet. way, every character would beg you to pick them, like in those old WCW wrestling games. Pick me! What's wrong with you? I heard Nash. Nash said don't pick me. Fine, because I can smash Nash. Pick Hogan, put him to sleep three times. Pick me, you know why? Because everybody's got to pay the price. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty sweet. I didn't know that. Any information I never that played that game. That's pretty awesome. Player to character can mean Pick the me! difference between bouncing off of a game after losing two rounds or wanting to come back again and again to play the guy with the baseball cap or the Oof. hot girl, the hot guy, or the edgelord, or the one that looks like Lord Farquaad. Uh -huh. An easy way to do this is to simply tell us where these characters are from. Street Fighter 2 was my first exposure to fighting games, and I remember the first character that I connected with was Ken. Not because I liked the fact that he was a Shoto or that he had a cooler gi than Ryu, I didn't know any of that at the time. The only reason why I picked Ken was because he was from the good old US of A, just like me. I can imagine- A lot of people actually like pick characters due to their like specific a attribute either they're from a specific country or they uh they they look like a specific person if they look like themselves or if they uh, stop breaking the law asshole Voltom, thank you so much for the tier one man i really appreciate that my boy but anyways what i'm saying is is that there's other attributes other than gameplay that are are are, are way more like that People want to pick characters that they want to try to connect with. That's outside of gameplay. A lot of people want to play because of they're better, because they're worse, or just strictly because they're just hot, straight up. Waifus, manfus, they look like me. They're from this place. Um, he has an interaction with this freaking thing. I don't know. He has a specific color that reminds me of my favorite anime character. Whatever the case may be, all these are different uh, things that get related to the character selection screen. So this is freaking uh, a great point to have. And that many other Wife players over meta, relate to exactly. this and select American characters to this day. Because in the Tina, huh? words of Derek the Black Beast Lewis. Derek Lewis? <laughs> now once someone Darryl does Lewis, what a guy. choose their fighter, that's really when the rubber meets the road for player retention. You don't get a second chance to make a first impression, so if a newbie accidentally picks a complicated character, they probably won't Bad have man. a good time Rip. while they struggle against controls they aren't used to or a play style that they Rip didn't if realize they start to they play Johnny like. first. Even here, character select menus can play a vital role in educating players about the pre-match choices that they make. Some fighting games have assist modes to even out the difficulty of a game's roster. Yep. Some games have tried to display special moves and how to do them on the character select screen. But the That's most arcades, common mostly. way that developers try to ease players into their games is to have their character select cursors default to a character that will give them the best shot at learning the game. I want to play this game. Ryu, I heard this game was Kazuya, good. Punch Planet, Jago, I think? Goku, Thomas and Magnum, Felia, Soul Bad Guy. The thing that all of these characters have in common Thanks is that so much, they man. have a very low skill floor, so they're easy to pick up. But they still have okay. a high hold enough on, skill. Okay, Kazuya is not a, a low. Is does not have an easy like floor. This character is not easy to learn. All right, I'll. I agree. Most of the main characters are Shoto's. They're the main staples. But Kazuya is not easy. He is not. I just want to let you guys know. He's not easy. He's one of the hardest characters to learn in the game. Actually, yeah, he's probably one of the, it's like top five hardest characters to learn in Tekken because of his toolkit. He's really freaking good. His game plan is simple. I'll tell you that right now. His game plan is simple, but his execution and the way that you pick him up, freaking hard as hell. Anyways. Do ya. Jago, Goku, Thomas and Magnum, Felia, Soul Bad Guy. The Those thing are all that pretty all of simple. These characters shadows. have in like, common is that they yeah. have a very low skill floor, except for so they're easy to pick up. But they still have a high enough skill ceiling because the tools they have are usually the building blocks of a great. This match still makes me salty, by the way. This match, the this match was the equivalent of telling me that Santa is not a, 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 an actual uh, like a human being. 
Like this moment right here was the equivalent of my parents telling me that Santa was not real. Like that's straight up. I couldn't believe it. I hated this moment with a burning passion. I was, I was, I was, I was, I, was, I didn't like it. Fighting game education, which means how that could the a rapper that's been right playing for like two weeks beat Daigo? The guy who did the freaking third strike parry. In games of speed, pacing, and combo structure, while serving as a great vector to learn for about marketing matchups. purposes. But what if you <sighs> don't feel like playing the Ryu of a game? How does a character select screen tell you who to pick that will give you the best chance of enjoying your playtime the first time? I'll talk more about that. I like that Lupe, but I'm just saying that was not a good. That was There's a good. lot of ways for character select screens. This to character catch select screen is amazing, with by the way. Strong design sense, smart theming, or something even a bit more out. Oh, that's of pretty the cool, box, actually. The JoJo. Most of JoJo the time, game, yeah. you remember these Kinda character play select it. screens not because of the way they look. But because of their music. Big band! The character select theme is usually the oh my God, this of a game's entire soundtrack. Yes! Mainly because it's the music that most players will spend the most time listening to. Every time you want to play a few rounds yes. or change some characters, you're gonna hear the first minute or two of that song. Anytime you hear that music, it should make you ready for the ensuing brawl that's about to happen. And because the MVC2 so character are theme, sound when we hear I want to take it for a ride. It's so right good. Back to the good old Yo, this is oh my god. Against our friends. Yo, that. For instance, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 doesn't have an amazingly well designed character select screen. The characters on its outer edges are actually really tough to read thanks to the warping of the menu's globe like structure, especially on a 4x3 CRT monitor. But the music? Well, it's a six second loop. It only features seven words for its lyrics, and it isn't really anything you'd ever listen to outside of the context of the game, but <laughs> this earworm was able to stake a flag into the brains of anyone who's ever played Marvel vs. Capcom 2 to become one of the most memorable pieces of fighting game music in history. And you know, the fact that music is such a big part of what makes for a good character select screen right, is this. really right, useful happened? for those times Go when. Back. What happened? This earworm the most memorable pieces of fighting game music in history. Yeah, dude. And you know, the fact that music is such a big part of what makes for a good dude, character select screen is really useful for those times when you're looking at a bad character select screen for minutes at a time dude. because you can't find or don't remember where the character you want to play is. At least then you have some good music to listen to. It is so important to have a consistent, this. This, this followable favorites. logic that helps you find the characters you're screens. looking for easily. Dragon Ball Fighters separates their heroes from their villains. In Street Fighter 4, characters are separated based off of either the games they debuted in or by Shadowloo affiliation. Not anymore. And Third Strike actually does Ultra, something really interesting. Player 1 and Player 2 begin on opposite oh, sorry, sides sorry, sorry, of sorry, the sorry. character select screen. Right, guys. So Capcom plays characters with similar playstyles on opposite sides to match. It's not perfect, but sorry, it's guys. smart, intentional design. For a good example of organization on character select, Look no further than the Super Smash Brothers series. Smash 64, now that's a character select menu. Two rows, big, bah, chunky bah, portraits. Bah, this screen bah. looks incredible. Every character on this screen is paired up with their series representatives. The Mario characters are all together. The Pokemon are all in one place. Melee takes it a step further by placing all of the clone characters. This one's really good too, Melee's one. really good. This logic extends all the way to Smash 4 on the Wii U. Because even though the this is pretty of too, man. This screen has grown exponentially, and there are even more franchises to represent. Yeah, you can be reasonably sure that you can pick out a character that you want to play if you know the video game series they belong to. Yeah. So with logic this good, there's no reason why Nintendo should want to change things up, right? That would be ridiculous. Ultimate kind of threw out the window, dude. Now, I know Nintendo makes some frustrating decisions when it comes to certain Yeah, Ultimate kind of threw business, that out the window. But there was I don't no even know what they're, they're, it's like. They're what they were doing with Smash Brothers character select screens. And before you say to me, well, Stumblebee, Nintendo's previously said that the character select screens organized by order of appearance in the Super Smash Brothers. Oh, is that franchise. right? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean. That method of sorting means nothing to anybody. You Facts! Facts. Facts. Doesn't matter. 
if it makes sense in one way, if that way it it doesn't bring anything to the table to make you want to play the character and make you want to like bond with the character selection screen. If it doesn't bring anything, then why the hell would you do it in the first place, bro? Chronological appearance sucks. Why won't you do it by franchise order? Basically doing it like uh, showing all the characters, Mario characters here, Pokemon characters here, this and that over here, and then do the guest characters down there. Like I, those that's that's way better than using the release order because it doesn't really add to anything, man. Now, when it comes to something like let's say BB tag, doesn't matter if it makes sense that it's ordered by franchise, like when rows that you have to scroll over, it doesn't bring anything. It actually affects you. You have to be able to put it in a way where you can not only make sense, just like you did before with the franchise, where it makes sense, but also brings a visual appeal. It brings some aesthetic. It brings uh, some sort of a like a good feeling to when you get attracted to a specific character. That's just how it is, man. That's how you got to do it. That's how you got to do it, man. Character selection screens are so underrated, dude. You could have organized this thing so many ways, alphabetically, by series, by how good of a driver oh, by they series, are. Dude. That would have still made more sense and smashed by series organized mess. And yeah, while there is still technically a difference between clones and Echo Fighters, it can be tough to understand why characters like Link and Young Link, Bowser Ugh. and Bowser Jr., Ugh. Samus, Samus and Samus are so far <laughs> apart from each other. And in a game with so many customization options, I find it strange that you actually aren't allowed to change any of this for yourself. This is what I'm talking about when I say that these menus need to have a clear, consistent, and followable logic, especially when you have such a large cast. Which brings me to my next point. If your character select screen doesn't look like this, then you are fucking up. Facts. Sure, this screen feels disorganized, but if I had my I way, take this one. I actually like this character, character selection screen, screen a lot, actually. Earth would show every character at once on one single grid. There are way too many fighting games out there that <clears either throat> put the characters on this one's one really bad too, actually. Row or split the screen into two for both player one and player two, or both. Which usually results in character select screens that hide the or hell is the, oh, gross. characters from view. Not only is this as ugly as sin, but it also means a longer time scrolling through each character instead of actually playing the game. Bad character select design is an unnecessary speed bump that only gets worse. Is this as an the SMK game? Jesus. Bigger. And when we're talking about unnecessary character select menu design, oh baby, it's a triple. You know we're talking about Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. I remember back when this menu was first revealed, people were hoping that it was simply a placeholder. After all, the director of the game said. Never, never believe what a developer says. Never, never. As much, but this is what we're stuck with. But why is it so bad? Well, even after looking at the number of spaces on this screen, we get a count of 21. Not bad, but can you guess how many characters? 53 characters. This game has 53 characters. That means that at any given point, you're seeing significantly less than half of the entire roster. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I've been saying for freaking ever. Exactly. I can't wait for the YouTube comments. Oh, but it's organized. I get to see the Undernight and the Persona. Oh. Bitch. You don't know how this works. That's not how it's supposed to be. Did you know that Azrael's in this game? 
No, because you didn't scroll over, did you? Stop breaking the law, asshole! Exactly. Characters by itself. Those characters get slapped on a long, single scrolling bar. There are also five more rows of crossover franchises like Persona 4 Arena and Undernight in Birth, each with their own long scrolling rows. But others like Ruby and whatever this row means have less than seven representatives. That's not terrible, but it still feels like it's poor form to have straight up unused space on a screen like this. Exactly! It looks awful! Dude! There's unused. Now! It's fat. Look at now! Look at, look at us now. BB tag. Look at it now. Now! We don't know if there's going to be more characters. So those slots are going to be unused, possibly forever. During the time of this recording, we're watching this. We don't know if there's more characters coming out. I'm going to be seeing those unused spaces forever. Oh, I'm sorry. Did, did I say that this screen had six rows of crossovers? I'm sorry. I meant five because... The sixth, for some ungodly reason, is the etc. bar, which. God, God, so many facts. I love this man. I love this man. Only serves as a means to select a random character or change your controls. Why are these options taking up space on this screen when they can just as easily go right here, right on the color select bar? Exactly. I rest my case, Your Honor. Book him. Book him. Why is there even a color select button when that could just happen after you choose your character? At least I can take solace in the fact that this menu's been so poorly received that fans have taken it upon themselves yeah. to redesign the character select menu. A lot yeah. of them look better than that's what a good the game one. That's, offers that's already. That's a good one. Look at this. Oh! Why is this not the official character select screen? Like, why? Now, who the hell was that handsome devil? Who the hell was that handsome devil? Who was that? <laughs> who was that spitting hard facts, huh? Select menu. A lot of them look better than what the game offers already. Look at this. <laughs> Why is this not the official character select screen? Like, why? Now, I want to look towards the future because yes. the fact of the matter did is it, boys. when you're looking for these little we did it, boys. life design choices, they're just we about did it, invisible. boys. <laughs> I mean, it's just like God said. When you do things right, people won't be sure you've done anything at all. With innovations being made every single day in fighting games, like better rollback netcode, or amazing new characters that bring new and fascinating ideas to the table, or great new esports initiatives, character selects feel like they are left in the past. There's got to be yep. a new game coming out soon yep. that's got to give, you know, a uh, revolutionize. Exactly. People are so... Man, if you compare... New fighting games right now to fighting games from back in the day. You take a look at freaking Marvel 3, Marvel 2, uh, freaking Third Strike, freaking uh, CVS 2 even. A whole bunch of like uh, freaking MVC, uh, MVC uh, I'm sorry, uh, MVC 1, I'm sorry. BBC T, dude. Do you remember? Dude, Calamity Trigger character selection screen was so sick, dude. Freaking Persona 4 Arena Ultimax. And then you take a look at the character select screens now where they try to prioritize things that you can prioritize if you want to, but they're so unnecessary compared to what people, if you want to have a more casual uh, appeal to your freaking game, the character selection screen is actually freaking important, man, because characters is what sells fighting games. I don't care what anybody says. Characters sells fighting games.
And if your character is appealing to a roster, and if the roster is really good, the theme is really good, that gets you prepared for what the freaking game has to offer. Dude. Exactly. Nice character select and really give new games something. Oh, to that looks familiar. <laughs> this song is so sick, though. Guilty Gear has had some fugly character select screen designs in the past, like Guilty Gear X, which looks like a graphic designer was about to quit and then threw some portraits on a table and then still better than BB like, Tag, though. This is it. And while Guilty Gear Strive's character select screen could use another pass, there's just so much going right for it right now. Each character is divvied up into four large buckets that describe their character archetype, from all around, power, speed, and tricky. They get two short blurbs that describe their playstyle and a rating based off of their effectiveness at long, medium, and short range. And with all of the changes to Strive's gameplay that are reported... I'm gonna say this right now. This whole bar system, this whole like rating system that they have for the power of the character or the strengths, I don't like that. I think it's freaking not I think it's misinformation. Because in fighting games, there's no definitive way to play a character. You can play a character now there's recommended ways of course, which is fine, but what this should say, this should be saying, "Hey, these are the character strengths." And they should as they should word it out for you word for word like for example axel strengths long range like uh strength long range uh, pokes uh he has a invincible reversal and he has so as i was saying yeah it should be bullet points uh bullet points exactly that's exactly right so bullet points uh, axel long range he has a command grab he has ways to be able to break defense he has uh an overhead he has just bullet points stating the freaking strengths of the character instead of this bar that says here here's the status of this character he has good he's good powerhouse uh he's a balanced character he's uh he's not very good at range and i'm like dude what is this, bro? What? It's 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 not very informative. It's just filler. That's all it is. They just try to make it look like it means something when it really doesn't. So I just wanted to m mention that. And with all of the changes to Strive's gameplay that are reportedly designed to simplify the series for those that haven't played Guilty Gear or find it too intimidating to get into, I believe that these character select changes have more value to your average newbie than any changes to air dash mechanics ever could. Without any Guilty Gear experience, you know exactly who you're looking at, their strengths, their weaknesses, and how they play. From all of this, you can generally tell the win conditions for all kinds of matchups, like how a big powerful boy like Potemkin has the best shot against a ranged boy like Axel Rose, only if he's able to get close. You can take away every color of Roman Cancel under the rainbow, but none of that will matter if the person you're doing that for feels uncomfortable with the character they choose. Strive's character select screen goes a long way in making it easier to find the fun, and I'd love to see these ideas come to fighting games in the future. So the next time you're facing down a character select screen, take a minute to appreciate this is a good one. Pick apart what makes it work, and except for see character if there's placements. Anything that you would have done differently. Now, while uh, the strive, uh, the actual uh, presentation is not good, I do agree with everything else. Like, they try to inform the players of different information for the characters. It's just it's how it's presented that it's got to change, man. It looks so weird. It looks like a Mario Kart selection screen. But I do agree it can be pretty effective for other people. Uh, yeah, the button check feature is good. And also, the uh, of course, the information. But you just got to present it differently, man. Uh, so, yeah, it, I do agree with that. Um Character selection screen here, dude, freaking amazing character selection screen. I love the, the theme. I love the fact you can button configurate. You can change your weapons. You can change your color. However, the freaking character formation where the he where, wherever they're putting these characters is freaking awful. Why are they thinking? Like, you got Jeet over here. You got freaking Soros over here. You got Zoe over here. We got freaking... Uh, uh, what are you doing? Placement is bad. I'd like to but I feel like Mike that's going to fix itself when other characters come out. For me their experience oh, in this topic, and I very much appreciate them taking the time to talk to me. I've been on a bit of a hiatus from the...
But anyways, that's pretty much the the video. All right. So okay, great video. The the blow up to BB tag. Yeah, seriously, man. I, like 100%. Subscribe to the channel too, man. He's really good. He uploads videos like not super constant. That's because he works on them quite a bit. And he puts a lot of effort into them. But I do enjoy his videos quite a bit. I'm subscribed to him.